government has said the focus is now turning to regulating behaviours with social distancing rather than regulating activities. There's also a focus on ensuring that workplaces are COVID safe for when staff and customers start to return. These final decisions will be made by National Cabinet on Friday when we'll start to see an easing of restrictions. But the COVID Commission chair has already indicated that going to a cafe and a restaurant will be the first part of normal life getting back to normal. All those small businesses that have been forced to, uh, to shut down, so cafes and restaurants, those sorts of businesses, all the small service businesses in our economy, we'd like to see them up and running. But of course that means that a lot of our big businesses need to come back into their offices and start working from offices. So I think we'll have a work from home, work from office rotation system and split for some time. And now it's about trying to get people to get back to their normal spending patterns. Ash, the Prime Minister has also defended our suppression strategy, so the decision to shut down the economy in the first place. Countries like the UK initially aimed for herd immunity, so hoping that when 60% of the population was infected, that would help them defeat the virus. They've since seen tens of thousands of deaths, and Scott Morrison saying that strategy clearly didn't work, and without the tough actions we took here, we could have seen a similar number of deaths. Thousands, if not tens of thousands, um, um, and certainly in terms of people contracting the virus, potentially hundreds of thousands. And this idea of herd immunity, nobody's got herd immunity. I mean, the United States haven't reached it, Sweden hadn't reached it, the UK hasn't reached it. I mean, you've got to get to about 60%, two-thirds of your population. Mm. And even with all the death and devastation we've seen in all of those countries, they weren't nowhere near herd immunity. Um, and no one's going to reach that. And so the idea that that's some sort of path that you can go down, that's a death sentence. Eliza, we've been hearing today about a really interesting trial about to get underway and people who have had coronavirus and now recovered are being asked to donate their plasma to get involved and, and help our scientists with that. Yeah, that's right, Ash. The almost 6,000 people who have recovered from COVID-19 are being asked to donate their plasma to scientists who believe they may have found a treatment for the most extreme cases of the virus. So that plasma will be used in a trial to assess whether that treatment is actually effective. The health minister, though, not over-promising anything just yet. Nearly 6,000 Australians, precisely 5,964, who have so far recovered from coronavirus. Every one of those cases is one to be celebrated, but every one of those cases can help unlock the potential treatment of using immunoglobulin from that convalescent plasma to protect and treat those Australians who are most ill, most gravely at risk uh, of serious complications or indeed losing their lives. It's not a guarantee, but it's promising. Ash, the biotech company CSL, which is leading the trial, needs 800 donations of plasma from recovered patients with the help of the Red Cross Blood Service. Ash?